724 is here and this is the game from 723 but it's just such a great game so I just had to cover it. It's not often that you see a position 5 hero out farm the enemy mid and offlaner and farm almost as well as the enemy carry but this is exactly what Poppy is going to do here on his position 5 enchantress. My holiness deepens. Welcome to the Church of Obelis. So, Enchantress here, she's got plenty of region. Um, he's uh, sitting here to see if the enemy often is coming. No one is here, and this indicates to him that something funky is going on. So, he's going to go and uh, chase this underlord. He no doesn't know that he's here yet, he hasn't seen him, but he knows because there's no one here. Uh, this has to be what the underlord is doing. So Puppy is going to go here and try to disrupt this, of course you can't kill this Underlord but you can put a lot of damage on him and at least make him pay for uh, doing this pulling shenanigans. So Puppy throwing a couple of spears and then eventually this Underlord is going to TP out but he's accomplished his goal, he's going to salve up and now he's doubled up this wave to disrupt this equilibrium. Because they're doing a dual lane in mid, they have this uh, Conker versus Viper lane and uh, a secret don't really want to play this lane so what they're gonna do here is gonna play extremely aggressively on this Kunkka they just want to broaden this lane, they just want to get a bunch of kills and uh, not have this sort of uh, passive farming situation where Viper is always going to win against the Kunkka so they just have this brawling here, they, they trade here 2 versus 2 unfortunately uh, this Kunkka died first both times so that's not ideal for him, but it's better than just pass through lane and we're, gonna, we're always going to lose. Meanwhile Puppy has been doing some pulling here, he's uh, pulled this uh, camp and this kind of pull here where you have to cut this tree is uh, quite finicky, so you want to practice that in the lobby uh, once or twice at least uh, until you get it right so you can uh, do it properly in your games. And right now since he's, uh, he's controlled the equilibrium here, he's on this pull, he just wants to zone out this Underlord. And his goal here is just to enable this Phantom Lancer to have a great game. And of course Underlord here in this 1 vs 2 lane, there's not that much he can do. And the reason he has to play this 1 vs 2 lane is because they're doing this, uh, this dual lane in mid. If you just leave Viper alone against uh, Kunkka and Tiny, he's going to lose. So you also need this, um, this Villa to help out in mid. And... Drawrench is not a hero that does particularly well on her own. Uh, she probably doesn't want to play alone against uh, this uh, uh, bad rider. So this kind of leaves Underlord to fend on his own. And he's just sort of trying to hide in the trees here, try to get what experience he can. But of course, uh, this Phantom Lance is getting a lot more out of this lane. And if you look at the lineup that each you have, they don't have very much AoE stuff, like Viper has a little bit here, but Nether Toxin is easily dodgeable. Uh, Tree and Protect has some AoE stuff, Underlord I guess. But generally they don't have very much uh, that can really deal with this Phantom Lancer. So as long as this Phantom Lancer is having a good game, this is going to be a good game for Secret. So Poppy on the side is all just focused on securing this Phantom Lancer's lane, and currently this Phantom Lancer is having the game of his life. Yes. Underlord just has to do some sort of pulling here. Uh, Underlord, as long as you don't have a couple of levels, it's quite difficult. Level 1 uh, fi Firestorm is not that strong, um, and this is only good if you can actually stay in the lane. So Underlord is having a really tough time here. And Poppy has now picked up this Mud Golem, which is a great creep for, for Enchantress. You can throw out this boulder, then when the creep dies you have two more boulders. So he's going to look for this Underlord, he's going to throw out the spoilers, only deals 75 damage these days. Used to be 125, but it was nerfed in uh, 723. Now he has these two shard golems, throws out some more boulders, and he has this Helmer Smasher, which is one of the strongest creeps at the start. So what he, t what he wants to do here is wait a little bit and go on this Underlord again when he shows up in lane here. And there he goes. He cuts off here with, uh, with these um, golems, gets the stomp in, he has another slow here from enchant and now he can get this kill, moving back here with the impetus, very important, and he has the first kill here and now it's almost 5 minutes so he's going to wait around here and he's going to stack this camp and then try to get uh, the bounty rune. 
Unfortunately, though, this village shows up, and you can't really contest that if you end, so he's not going to bother. He's just going to take the stack and concede the bounty rune. Now, this Viper has a couple of levels. Kunga can't really lane anymore, so he's uh, reduced to jungling. Meanwhile, we have Vyapso taking over the lane and uh, sort of sitting here. The problem with Tiny in lane against a Viper is that you can't really contest this lane any better. And you know, they're going here on, on Yapsor and uh, Puppy TP's here to help out. But uh, by the time he's here, the fight is already more or less over. Uh, but they do here catch out this uh, this treant thanks to the X mark and now there's a situation here where you have you have uh, this lane that uh, no one can really lane against Viper here one versus one uh, this Kunka doesn't stand a chance he's uh, too far behind this um, tiny can't really lane either but you can just park an Enchantress here Enchantress can just stay in this lane he's not really going to contest the Viper but at least she's, she's not going to be bullied out of this lane because you have a lot of range and you can just sort of stay back and uh, survive in this lane, get the XP, get an occasional last hit here or there and um, be fine against this Viper. And leaving the Phantom Lancer alone here is completely fine. Phantom Lancer is almost level 7, he's up uh, 2 levels almost on Underlord so he doesn't need any more help here in this lane. And meanwhile, it's just Poppy soaking up the experience in mid lane. And it's very important to do this. If your mid lane has to jungle, you have to put a support in, in the mid lane. And uh, Enchantress is a good choice here because uh, she has less kill potential rotating around the lane. So this is why Tiny is uh, just uh, um, staying here, fighting with his team. Um, whereas uh, Ench is uh, sitting in the lane. And of course, as we mentioned, Ench is uh, better against Viper, even though Viper just has now also left the lane. He's actually uh, faster with jungling, because um, he's now putting points in another toxin and uh, just gonna jungle those neutral creeps. Poppy was very importantly using these range creeps. These are great help in CSing. And um, let's look at how much damage these do. This is uh, uh, 53 uh, damage, and this is piercing damage, which does. 50% extra damage against creeps, so it's a lot of damage being done by those creeps. And even though he's uh, taken over the mid lane, he hasn't forgotten about the supporting duties. Uh, he's still going to do some warding, of course he's not going to venture very far here, but uh, this is a pretty good ward. He's going to see this uh, Viper when he's jungling, he can see rotations coming in here. And it's not a ward that's too likely to be de-warded. So looking at the networks right now, we see that actually Kunka has managed to surpass Viper. They're just both jungling and Kunkka has got this nice Eren Talon here. And Viper in this patch is just no longer as good as jungling as he used to be. Like this Nether Toxin is not as strong as it used to be. He used to have a lot shorter cooldown and um, that was more frontal in this, in this damage whereas now it only does a lot of damage once you're actually in um, when creeps have actually stood in, in the in toxin for a long time. So it's going to kill creeps eventually, but it's just going to take longer than it used to. And Kunk is actually quite good at jungling, especially if you get this Iron Talon. He's also got a couple of uh, Bracers to help out with his damage. So this is actually going, going uh, quite well for Kunk, considering this very tough lane that he's had. 10 minute mag is coming up, so Puppy is going to help contest the runes. Very important. Uh, the spawn unit is a lot more important than uh, uh, some of these wave, uh, wave creeps. You can definitely afford to give up a couple of last hits here if you can help out uh, with this fight. And they do get this kill on Crit's Willow, who is also uh, doing really well. She also really found Piero. And already we can see that Poppy is doing really well in net worth. He is uh, 3k net worth, ahead of the enemy offline, ahead of the enemy 4 position, uh, even ahead of his own uh, 3 and 4. So he's already on on route to be really farmed in this game, but at the same time though, he's not uh, abandoning his position five role. He's still playing position five. He is uh, getting all these uh, supporty kind of items. He's getting tranquil boots rather than treads. He's uh, going for glimmer cape rather than something like a dragon lance. He is still playing a position 5 enchantress, just a very farm position 5 enchantress. And it's important that uh, 
you have someone who's playing position 5 in your team. Like, even if having a really good game, if, if you're sort of normally in the position 5 and then you're having a really good game, you have to have someone else in your team who picks up the slack if you don't want to play position 5 anymore. Like, it's, it's okay to say I'm the carry now and I'm not going to play core enchantress, but then someone else on the team has to pick up a slack. Someone else on the team has to then say, okay, I'm, just, I'm now playing uh, support bad rider or I'm now not, not, not playing position 5 tiny. And that's often kind of difficult because, um, like, Zai and... Uh, and Yapso are not as good as playing position 5 as Puppy is. Because it's, it's just not the, ro the, the role that they're, um, that they're used to. So Puppy is still playing position 5 and he's just going to do it with more farm. And it's very much okay for Secret to play this passively in this game. They have the late game condition in this Phantom Lancer. And Phantom Lancer is farming really, really well. He's having the game of his life. As long as this Phantom Lancer gets farmed, everything else is fine. So Sukuna is fine sitting back, uh, farming these side lanes and then gradually collapsing in mid and trying to defend here. And with the uh, secret coming in here, EG kind of getting scared. Um, it's kind of difficult for them to push in here because the problem with this EG lineup is that they have no real initiation. Like all they can do is just run in here and hit people with their spells. They don't have any sort of hero who can like blink in and get kills. They don't really have any real stuns in this lineup. So it's kind of very difficult for them to force a fight on EG. And Puppy, as I said, still playing position 5. He's still warding here. He's uh, doing the things he's supposed to. And now he's going to actually leave this lane for Yap to, to Yapsa for a little bit here. Uh, just because he was nearby. And now he's going to go here into this uh, bottom lane. He's now quite farmed, he has a Glimmer Cape, he's level 9, so he wants to uh, play a bit more aggressively now and uh, um, leave a little bit more farm to, to Yapso and to Nisha in the mid lane. Or possibly the Phantom Lancer, like whoever can farm this, this is fine. And um, Puppy is actually quite difficult to kill now with his Untouchable and his Glimmer Cape, so he can sit here in the bottom lane and uh, take this uh, somewhat more risky farm. Yapso has come down here with his Blink Dagger, they've put up this uh, Tinker Ward or Treant Ward rather and they're waiting here for someone to come out and play and then they can jump him with this Blink Dagger as well as of course damage put out by the Ench. And Treant bites here and they go on him, this is a quick kill, Treant can't do anything, the Drowl Ench is also being in here, they have to retreat here. And the, the reason they can make this place is because of the ward vision they have, they have a ward here they have a ward here, um, it's very difficult for them to surprise them in this uh, bottom lane. The only thing they can do is uh, go for a smoke. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. A couple of seconds later, uh, we see a three-man smoke with uh, Drow also behind here. And they do find this enchantress now. Um, use a sentry, catch her out, and yeah, so sees uh, the score here and uh, just knows to retreat. And he is going to blink out and uh, TP to safety. So this was like a four-man rotation to kill a position five. You're fine with that. And especially Marto is fine with that. He's farming like a madman. He is by far the highest net worth. He's having such a good game. And this uh, enchantress kill doesn't really matter that much in the grand scheme of things. And Puppy TPs back down here. Even if they go on him again, that's fine. Because his... Uh, role in this game is not to scale and uh, uh, be the strongest enchantress ever. His role in this game is to secure this Phantom Lancer's farm. And that is what he's doing. He's forcing to react to this uh, wave down here uh, by pushing it in, using his range grip. This range grip has almost 100 damage, that's almost 150 damage against uh, creeps. So this wave is going to push in and now they can defend here in the middle. They lost the uh, bad rider, but again, this is not a big deal. Losing a hero here or there is not a big big deal as long as Matumba Man keeps farming. And you can see the impact of this range creep here, just this wave pushing really, really quickly. And you see Yapso waiting behind there, see if someone shows up and maybe they can get a kill, throw this uh, hero maybe back to Enchantress and get a quick kill. But no one bites, so they're posturing here, they're farming very aggressively. 
and EG engage here on Kunkka. They use three end ultimates, and uh, Kunkka has been gone on, but thanks to the Glimmer Cape, he survives, and Seeker can just can just disengage, and this is fine. That's just not enough catch here on EG, so Seeker can just walk away. Nothing dies here. Everything is fine. Back to farming. And speaking of farming, there's also runes just, sp uh, just spawning. Badger TP's top with um, his actually regular TP and still has the boots of travel to rejoin his team if their fight breaks back out. And Secret gets all these bounty runes. After a little bit more farming, they're smoking behind this Phantom Lancer, uh, just sort of baiting with him. Meanwhile, this is a blink initiation here on this Underlord. He's not the best target, obviously. But he's quite under farm, so they get this kill quite quickly. They're trying to look for more here, but they don't really find anything except for this courier, which is a nice addition. But uh, this is uh, great. They can now push this uh, tower here together with this Phantom Lancer and just uh, constrict EG even more. EG, one thing they have going for them is that they still have all these towers in the top and uh, in middle. But this bottom lane has really been pushed in here and they're going to lose this tier 2 tower and from there it's going to be a lot more difficult to uh, um, farm in their own jungle. Poppy has picked up a 4 staff going full support here. He's not going for this dragon lance first, he's just picking up this 4 staff. He is as I said playing position 5 enchantress even though he's farmed more like a 3. A couple of minutes later and Tigris Network has grown even more thanks to all the farming they've done and now it is time to go for Roshan says Matu it has starts hitting this uh, Roshan, Matu is really refarmed he's got this, uh, this trifecta of uh, Difu, Mansa, Heart and then on top of that he also has this very strong motion item in the Mindbreaker as well as of course his treads EG try to contest this uh, Roshan and what do you do as Poppy here? You just sit back, you are not uh, the initiator, you have two great initiators here on your team with Tiny and with Batrider, so you can just uh, afford to sit back here and um, it's not really getting too much done in this particular fight because this uh, drone engine is zoning him, but he knows he can do this kind of place. He is quite resilient, he has all these points in the interest attendance and he can just stay here on the outskirts of the fight and juck his spears and let his, uh, the rest of his team do their work for him. He's playing this enchantress very defensively. He has these defensive items in the full staff and the glimmer cape. He can save his teammates if they're in trouble. And um, other than that, he's just, just uh, sort of providing a little bit of damage, but not as much damage as he could if he had like a dragon or something like that. But his job in this game is not to do the damage. There's gonna be enough damage coming out of Matumba Man and uh, the Misha's Conquer. Uh, you don't really need this position 5 and trying to do the damage. They're going Roshan now. Maybe it would be better to not uh, let this uh, Centaur die, but uh, it's not too important. But the important thing is that they do get this uh, Roshan and EG are too late to contest. Also see Poppy here using some of the spears here just to make this Roshan go a little bit quicker. And the fight breaks out, but EG is too late to the party. They've already conceded the Aegis and there's nothing they can do here. Now it's time to go high ground. Matu is in front here because literally unkillable. And the rest of his team are just more sitting back here. Tiny is now getting in here and uh, doing some hits here with his uh, invisible tree. But Repair Kit gets used, and it's quite difficult to push against the Repair Kit here. In 724, Repair Kit was nerfed. It no longer has the multi shot ability, but here in 723, it still has that ability, so it's important not to estimate that. And they go here for the for the runes. They kill Crit, who was uh, trying to get this uh, shrine in his rune, but um, they shut that down and secure the runes, take back the shrine. And now they just want to push back in this, this lane here. They use this range group to do that, and that's enough. And now Poppy can move back into the mid lane and have his range creep uh, do all the work here. Another fight here over this tier 2 tower. The Underlord gets dragged out here, and Viper is forced to retreat. And Martin doing some crazy diving. And what do you do as Poppy here? 
you just stay here, you take it with this creep. Melee creeps are great against buildings because they do normal damage, which is good against uh, structures. And you can also tank a lot of uh, damage because it's 1800 HP. So you just uh, go in there, hit this building, and another recapping kit being used. And they back out again. Very formulaic, just uh, back off against repair kit and um, go for the different tower. They go for this tower now, and what does Puppy do here? Just stays back here. He doesn't want to go too far forward here. There's some crazy diving going on. Puppy doesn't care. He's just going to stay here. He's going to use his heal, heal up Yapso, and um, make sure that his uh, cores are safe, especially Nisha, because he, Nisha, unless, unlike Matu, is not invulnerable. He has the BKB, which is just used, but now he can definitely be killed. Uh, so Poppy is here nearby to save him if necessary. And Matu, not retreating, he still has the Aegis, but they got a lot of damage done here. And um, now they're backing out, they have to heal up a little bit. There's no real rush here, they have such a large net worth lead. They don't have to like, super overcommit for, for these Raxes. Now they're back in here again, going on Ramses. And Ramses losing all his mana. Poppy meanwhile. Sitting back here with his Enchanted Quiver now. Enchanted Quiver is kind of a weak item, but it's really, really strong in Enchantress. So he has that now. Um, could also use his Vampire Fangs here. Actually, he's using his Magic Wand here. It's actually a kind of more important in the fight than the Vampire Fangs. And he's just staying back here. He's not going in and doing all this AoE stuff. He's just stay staying back here, tracking his spears, and uh, contributing a little bit of damage here and uh, being ready to save his teammates with Glimmer Cape and Force Staff if necessary. After the first set of Rex, they go for the second one, and at this stage the game is more or less over. EG is just staying in here through sheer stubbornness, but uh, this game is definitely over. So what you learn in this game is that uh, playing position 5 doesn't mean you have to be under farmed. You don't want to take away farm from your cores, but if your cores have to leave the lane, uh, always put a support there, it could be position 4 or 5. In this case it was the Enchantress, it just made more sense against this Viper and uh, just the fact that this Tiny is a more active uh, support than the Enchantress. It's easier to, to uh, move around the, the, the map and make plays with the Tiny than with, than with an Enchantress. So it makes sense, just park the Enchantress in middle lane, get all the last hits you can and most importantly the levels. and. Doing this, they had this very farm, position 5, but he's still built as, as position 5. You still need someone to buy your wards, you still need someone to actually place your wards, you need someone to buy these defensive uh, saving items, and that is what Puppy did. Even though he's actually more farmed than his Viper, he's uh, almost as farmed as this Drow, but he's still playing the role that his team needs him to play. Oftentimes in lower level games you see these uh, players who uh, even when they're playing position 4 or 5 but then they have like a good start, they get a couple of kills maybe, um, maybe they're in a lane for a while and then they say okay I'm a core now, I'm just going to you know go for my uh, uh, some sort of shitty item like a Midas or I'm gonna go for something crazy like a Maelstrom or something stupid and I'm just now gonna play a core enchantress, I'm the carry now but that is not going to work. Even if you're having a good game, this means that your team is not going to have as good of a game as they could, so this uh, play from Puppy makes a lot more sense, and that is why he is the major champion. If you want to see how to play Enchantress in position 4 and uh, 3 role, check out these other games, and subscribe to this channel, ring the bell, and always willing, I'll see you next time.